Kohanuddin, Dr. Ma'ruf Nuruddin, and Dr. Indira Prabasari. All speakers will give us an interesting lecture about various topics related to a tropical farming system. Well, before we start this session, let me inform you the regulation of this session. Speaker will have 20 minutes presentations uh, and the Q&A session will be open once the presentations of the speaker is finished. For participants joining us via Zoom meetings, please turn off your microphone during the presentation. And for full course participants, I encourage you to be actively participated during the Q&A session. Please click raise hand button in your Zoom meeting if you have some question and uh, you can also write your question in the Q&A section. For participants joining us in YouTube live streaming, you are invited to ask some question by writing the question in the live chat column in YouTube live streaming. Well, uh, for the first uh, session of uh, today's talk, please welcome Dr. Gunawan Budianto, Rector of um, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Siti. Yes, Pak Gun, uh, can you hear my voice clearly? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 I'm hearing you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, please share screen your presentation slide. Uh, you yeah. will have uh, 20 minutes for presentation, uh, Dr. Gunawan. Mm -hmm. And yeah. for all participants, please pay attention for the talk yeah. uh, because uh, Dr. Gunawan will give us the talk about land use uh, for tropical uh, farming system in the coastal area. Uh, okay. Dr. Gunawan, uh, time and place are now yours. Yeah. I'm telling you uh, uh, that the house uh, can release the, the mute. Yeah, because I cannot uh, share uh, this this PPT file. Yeah, because host disable participant uh, screen sharing. Okay, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity uh, for me to uh, share uh, the uh, long experience uh, in handling uh, the coastal area management. <clears throat> in this time, I want to share uh, the experience that uh, call land use for tropical farming at coastal area, a landscape of local farming. So you can see that, uh, yeah, this is the world uh, map and you can see the location uh, of Indonesia. Uh, and then, to, yeah, this is uh, our Indonesia country. Uh, yeah, we are the, the archipelago country that have uh, more than uh, 10,000 islands. And so the, we can uh, go to the Java Island and then uh, step to the central Java. And uh, the location of uh, this coastal uh, area in, in the central Java uh, in a place on the special region of the Jakarta, you can see like this. And uh, yeah, if I zoom uh, this picture, you can see that, yeah, this is uh, to Jakarta city where our university place. Uh, the Jakarta is a disaster prone city that always uh, has uh, or faces uh, the threat of one Merapi eruption, yeah, with the red the color and earthquake to the shifting uh, of the earth plates uh, came from tectonic 
plates. So UMY, uh, our university, is located in Yogyakarta City. So uh, I think uh, we we also has a disaster from campus. So that's why UMY is a disaster from campus. Mount Merapi and so this created a specific agroecosystem, which can be uh, I think uh, which can be appropriately uh, adopted by local farmer. Uh, in a long experience. The area influenced by Merapi activities was a highland farming, which has the main problem of uh, erosion. And then also uh, in the desert, the salt beach area was a sandy cast land with the problem of water retention low water low water retention and also low uh, fertility uh, yeah this is uh, a landscape of coastal area i mean yeah you can see uh, this is uh, the form of the sand dunes uh, it's generally uh, we can uh, find uh, this this form of uh, morpho Morphological uh, on the uh, earth surface. Yeah, so you can see that this the soil is dominated by uh, sand, sand fraction. So we can think that uh, this type of uh, the soil is always dry. And they have a, a low content of water. With the coarse texture soil uh, or sand friction domination, cause the large pore species and allows water to easily run through it beyond the reach uh, of roads. Gravitational water always happen minute to minute, and as a result, drought prone with low addition force. And then little surface area for the particle volume. So that's why it will cause uh, the reducing fertility. They don't form uh, the cloth, yeah, like it is. Uh, so, I want to show you uh, the main problem uh, of sandy soil at coastal areas. First, the area dominated by sand and low content of clay mineral also. More than 90% uh, of the volume uh, fully dominated uh, by sand. And as a consequence, local obesity in producing water, uh, sorry, local obesity in providing water uh, for plant growth. And the second is the content of organic matter. As we know that uh, with the dry, uh, dry climate, organic matter will uh, be decomposed Fastly. So that's why the application of organic matter in on this area is just has a short influence. Yeah, because of uh, low content of organic matter, it's because the, the soil have uh, low fertility. So we need uh, nitrogen for fertilizer. But the other problem is the process of nitrification. This is the transformation uh, from ammonium, iron ammonium, ammonium iron to nitrates or NU3 min. NO3 min. And then because of the sand fraction and low content of organic matter, 
the soil structure have no clot or aggregates. So that's why high porosity and water flow as gravitational water. And you can see that the leaching of nitrates will happen because iron nitrates cannot be fixed uh, on the soil surface because the soil have no aggregates. And as the result, uh, nitrogen fertilizer will easily uh, leaching out from the root zone. And the low, ex uh, the low efficiencies on application of nitrogen is the problem. So that's why all the process uh, cause uh, the sandy soil at coastal area have a low productivity. Okay, uh, yeah, this is uh, the problem of inorganic nitrogen fertilizer inefficiency in sandy soil. We can see that inorganic nitrogen fertilizer breakdown in the soil solution. For the example, urium. Yeah, urium uh, will uh, will meet uh, water, and then uh, transforms to uh, S two CO three and uh, ammonia. And with the reduction process, the ammonia, the ammonia will be transformed to uh, ion ammonium plus. Yeah, this is uh, the positive cation. And also, if you use uh, Z ZA or ammonium sulfate, also will be uh, hydrolyzed by well water and also from uh, ammonium positive ion and uh, hydroxide. But the decontinuing process, the positive ion, ammonium positive ion will be oxidized and also uh, will be helped uh, by the microorganism activities like uh, microbacter yeah and will uh, will be transformed to uh, nitrate nitrate never could uh, be fixed by the soil surface and they uh, they are in the soil solution. So that's why if uh, the gravitational water happen, we can see that uh, ion nitrate will be leached out from the root zone. Yeah, this is the main problem. The big problem of the um, um, coastal area soil. Yeah, this is the idea how to manage, uh, how to manage the, the coastal sandy soil for, uh, for growing the plant, especially a seasonal plant. The entry point is how to use the organic matter kind of the organic matter sources can be used in this area. Why? Because two reason. Organic matter application can improve soil structure first and then increase quality of soil organic colloid. 
as you know that organic matter also increase increase uh, the cation exchangeable capacity. So that's why uh, from this reason we can increase water holding capacity. So that's why we can hold the uh, the flow of uh, gravitational water. So that's why when we apply uh, the nitrogen fertilizer, we can reduce of nitrate leaching. So that's why <clears throat> we can increase uh, the productivity of coastal land. Yeah, uh, we see that uh, generally coastal land on the south beach of King Jakarta is uh, dominated by sand fraction, sand soil fraction. And you know that uh, in the dry climate, organic matter, soil organic matter will decompose rapidly. It may cause coastal land uh, to have no enough organic matter content and humus to create uh, aggregate, soil aggregates. From this reason, uh, the soil with low content of organic matter will have, uh, I think, will have a uh, low capacity in holding the water. Nitrogen content and makes uh, fertilizer on uh, an application would be inefficient because nutrient will be leased out from the root zone. Yeah, this is uh, the ex long experience. Many sources of uh, organic matter had been used to increase the water holding capacity of sandy land. We can uh, apply uh, Fresh organic matter, manure, compost, or other material came from plant juice that will be applied in the pre-planting also, and completely mix uh, to the soil. Watering was done daily to keep soil moisture along one week incubation time. Yeah. We need to uh, share the incubation time for one week to uh, give uh, the, the opportunity uh, to the process of the organic matter decomposition. Especially nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium two times a day. The local technology gave the far more simple way uh, of reducing nutrient leaching out uh, the road soon. Yeah. Watering practices use a shallow ground fresh water. But the problem is sometimes we 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 uh, we think how do they uh, how do they get fresh water at the beach? But you can see that the adaptation between farmers and environmental condition built uh, intense experience. Uh, but the main problem here is how to keep the soil with enough capacity in the water holding for the entire plant's uh, life processes. Farmer also has a reasonable knowledge that with dry condition and strong wind velocity, a plant needs more uh, water supplies to balance water transpiration out from the leaf. Yeah. The water content of the root zone is critical factor in nutrient uptaking and the whole plant growth state. Yeah, this is the, the main problem. How to keep the, uh, uh, the water content in the uh, field capacity. You know that the field capacity condition is 
the macro pores filled by air and the micro pores micro pores is, is uh, filled by water yeah this is the best condition of water content to support uh, the plant growth We give you the, the sim of the, we call uh, sumo renteng. Sumo renteng is a simple uh, technologies that we can use on the, on the area. Yeah. The fresh water near the shoreline is impossible. Maybe watering practices use shallow ground fresh water. Fresh water near the shoreline. Is it possible? How do they get fresh water at the beach? It's a problem. But the answer is they use uh, smart and simple technologies to uh, to manage uh, the water irrigation. The answer is you can see that uh, yeah this is uh, the shoreline uh, condition yeah you can see that in the in the uh, I think the, yeah this is the uh, uh, sandy land and you can see the sea level yeah sea level and we have uh, deep groundwater. Why, 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 we, why we, we have a grip, uh, deep uh, groundwater? Yeah, because the, um, I think the differences uh, in the specific gravity of uh, seawater and fresh water came from the uh, river or came from the uh, rainfall. So you can see uh, the picture above. With this, uh, yeah, this is uh, the information why the fresh water can uh, can be placed or can be kept uh, in the shoreline area. Yeah, this is the sandy soil. Uh, if the rainfall happen, we have. Uh, more uh, fresh water supply. So that's why the fresh water can be placed uh, near the uh, breakage water. Breakage water is a layer of water. Uh, also, uh, I mean, mixture of fresh water and sea water. And so you can see that in a sandy soil, always happen the sea water intrusion. This is the seawater. And you can see that the fresh water can be stored here because seawater uh, have a bigger, higher specific gravity. So uh, the fresh water came from river or came from rainfall with the lower specific gravity can be can be uh, stored on it. And the fresh water dip depends on intensity of uh, rainfall. Yeah, this is the uh, experience of the local farmer uh, in using uh, the coastal sandy land in the south to Jakarta. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the interesting talk, Dr. Gunawan. Now, uh, everyone, we will start uh, the Q&A session and we will see if we have some question from the participant from uh, joining us from Zoom meeting. Let's see. There's some question. Uh, 
Okay, we have some question here from uh, Kota Sagai. Oh, can you hear me, my voice? Yes, uh, ah, we yes, can you. uh, hear your voice clearly. Ah, thank you very uh, much. Uh, yes, thank you for the, yes, thank you for the opportunity and uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, yes, I understood uh, the fertilizer and the uh, uh, irrigation system would be solved uh, from the land problems. So I want to ask about the, uh, uh, yes, is there any suitable crop for sandy land? Yes, under what is the main crops in coastal in Indonesia? Uh, this is my question. Uh, thank you. Did you, could you answer for this question? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes. Fusiti, maybe you can yeah, reply the question. Uh, and yes. then the, uh, 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 from problem of the sun. Sorry. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, the, the question uh, from Kota Sagai is what is the main crops cultivated in coastal area in Indonesia? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. Main crops. Yeah. In this, in this It's area. the question from Kota Sagai, Dr. Gunawan. Yes. Okay. You thank you answer. very much. Uh, Mr. Kurosage from Japan, I think, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, depends of the season. Oh. Yeah, yeah. If they can uh, find much water, I think uh, from the uh, from the uh, wet climate, I think uh, they also uh, uh, plant the rice. Yeah, the rice and uh, the vegetable, vegetable, mm -hmm. yeah, vegetable. But in the dry climate, they plant uh, the hot beauty. Uh, I think oh, what is the hot beauty? Uh, mm, chili, uh, oh. not chili. What is it? What is the hot hot beauty? Uh, and also uh, mice, corn. Yeah, and then the um, uh, like uh, uh, the beans, uh, like the what's the meaning of the the chronovic uh, chronovical uh, chronovical beans? I think. Uh, from the uh, so do you soybean local soybean is like a, yeah this is that uh, not for uh, not for food but yeah this is uh, just a for uh, like a wild uh, soybean or something no 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 not so good roti oh. soybean is just a small very small soybean that oh. but not for food it's just a for the Craft, make a craft, uh, yeah. like a, mm. like a, yeah, handcraft, handcraft, mm. yeah, gradinan, oh, handcraft. handcraft. Oh, yeah. okay. Handcraft. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I got it. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Genawan, for the explanation. Uh, Kota Segai, uh, how about the answer? Uh, uh, is it? Yes, I yeah, you are... very understand. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. The next question uh, will be from Indonesia, Arya. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, no. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, my name is Arya. I'm from Yamagata University. Uh, my question to Bapak Gunawan, thank you for the explanation. But I want to know about how about the condition of paddy felt soil, because it said that in the uh, sandy soil, uh, has a lot of problem, mainly in the leaching of nitrate. Uh, how about the condition of paddy field soil? And my second question is, how about the soil diversity in the Yogyakarta? Because it said that uh, it's low content of organic matter. How about the microbial condition? Thank you. Okay. 
Thank yeah. you, uh, Mr. Arya. Can you get the point, Dr. Gunawan? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mas Arya yes. from Jemakatan University. Yeah. First of all, uh, before they plan the pedi field, they use uh, the undersurface, subsurface uh, mass uh, to keep uh, the 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 depth of the water. Yeah, and I think uh, they also have a good reduction of the pedi field, but it's only one. Uh, it's only one time in a year when uh, the rainfall season come, they ready to uh, they ready to prepare uh, the subsurface mats. Yeah, use plastic uh, like this. So uh, about the soil diversity in Jakarta, it depends of the current material. If uh, the so we can see that we have uh, Merapi uh, volcano or Mon Merapi, which is uh, one of the most active uh, volcano in Indonesia. Yeah, the eruption period happen in every year or even every two years with a small. Uh, between small eruption until a very big eruption for every six to eight years. But you can see that uh, in the other uh, part of the Jakarta, like uh, South Mountain, uh, little Gunung Kidul, yeah. This area uh, influenced uh, by the by the uh, calcareous uh, material, uh, like uh, which has a calcite content, you know, calcite like an N magnesite also uh, like uh, calcium carbonate and also magnesium carbonates. Yeah, but uh, this really affected uh, the soil formation in there. So that's why uh, only uh, two source of uh, influence of uh, came from the perimaterial first came from the uh, sediment of uh, Mon Merapi eruption, and two, uh, came from the, uh, I think the weathering of the calcite and magnesite material from the, from the south part of the Yudhakarta. Yeah, so that's why the diversity of soil in this area can uh, divide it uh, into group of soil. First is a sandy soil, but uh, if the sandy soil free of the water sea level, the sandy soil will transform and also will be influenced by the organic matter or humus decomposition because this area uh, full of vegetation. But in the coastal area, we have no a big vegetation. So that's why the influence uh, of uh, from the organic matter is low. And we fully uh, has uh, sandy soil. But in the other area of the Jakarta, especially near the Monorapi, you, can, you, you will see that every year, this area uh, will, have, uh, will, be, will have a deposit of the also S eruption, 
as a mon merapi and also uh, the pyroclastic material with the uh, sandy sandy friction. But because in this area full of the vegetation, you can see that the this area uh, will have uh, soil with the better productivity. Yeah. And uh, in the Gunung Kidul area, I think uh, will be influenced by the disintegration result or with the result uh, from the uh, local material. And Dr. Gunawan, uh, I'm sorry yeah. that the time is up. Maybe you can oh, okay, uh, okay. give a short explanation regarding the second question of uh, Arya. Yeah. Just a short answer yeah, for okay. the second okay. question. From yeah, it's just a uh, what about with the microbial activity? I think yeah, microbial activity is depend on the uh, organic matter source as a energy source from the microbes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Gunawan, for your uh, answer for all the questions. Uh, we apologize that we cannot prolong the question and answer session because uh, the time is already up. Uh, before we close the session with Dr. Gunawan, let me share some uh, summary from uh, his presentation. So the sandy soil or uh, soil in the coastal area is known to have a low fertility uh, due to low content of organic matter and also clay content. That is why uh, there are some uh, recommendation or suggestion if uh, we would like to uh, improve the fertility in the sandy soil for the tropical farming, we can apply uh, organic matter and also uh, do the watering practices. Uh, once again, thank you for Dr. Gunawan for uh, joining with us in today's talk. Uh, we are looking forward to see you again, Dr. Gunawan, maybe in another event. Thank you. Well, uh, before we go to the second session, uh, I have an information for the full course participants. Uh, for the full course participant, uh, uh, we will assign you a case study for each group to be discussed further in your WhatsApp group. And the result of each uh, discussion uh, group will be presented in tomorrow's session. So please uh, make sure that you pay attention to the uh, all uh, talk today and the detailed information regarding uh, the student group discussion and also student group presentation will be informed by uh, your assigned LO. Well, uh, we have uh, the five of coastal area, the five of the sea. Now uh, for the second talk, let's hike to the mountain. And I'm delighted to invite Dr. Eko Hanudin from Gajah Mada University and he will deliver his presentation about land use for tropical farming in Mount Merapi. Dr. Eko, uh, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining with us, Dr. Eko. Uh, please share screen your presentation. You will have uh, 20 minutes for presentation, Dr. Eko. Uh, and we still invite uh, all participants to ask some question for this session in the Q&A section in the Zoom meeting, or you may uh, click raise hand button in the Zoom meeting. Dr. Eko, uh, time and place are, are yours. Oke, okay, thank you, uh, Miss Chairman. Circle ya, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Hello everyone, good afternoon. In this station, uh, the committee gave me the task to talk about the uh, sorry, a land use for tropical farming at uh, Mount Merapi. This is the map of uh, Indonesia. Ya. Yeah. 
uh, based on this uh, map, you can imagine how big Indonesia is. Yeah. Indonesia is a big country with uh, 17,000 islands and the population around 255 million. So uh, you can imagine every day we need at least, yeah, maybe if we eat uh, food twice a day, maybe uh, 250 million multiplied by two, you will get around five hundred million a plate of food. So in Indonesia, every day, at least we need around 500 million plate of food. So uh, you, uh, you can imagine how much that is. Uh, uh, based on this map, you can see that there are at least 130 active volcanoes in Indonesia. So almost all of the geologists in the world agree that Mount of Merapi is the most active volcano in the world. So uh, Merapi is a relatively dangerous volca vol volcano. Yeah. And this is the position of Merapi, uh, Mount of Merapi. Yeah, Mount Merapi cover around four districts, yeah, Sleman district, Klaten, Boyolali, and Magelang. So if there is a uh, eruption, so at least there are four prone districts affected by uh, the Merapi eruption. Now the history of uh, Merapi. Merapi is a uh, uh, Java words yeah, means the fires, yeah, Mount of Rabi. This is located around uh, 32 kilometers north of Yogyakarta. And the height of Mount Rabi is around 1,911 uh, meters above sea level and has steep slopes yeah, with dense vegetation on the its lower flanks. One of the biggest eruptions occurred in 1,000 and six, which caused the Yogyakarta area to be covered with volcanic ash material, yeah, as thick as around six uh, meter. Yeah. The other big erosion occurred in uh, several uh, years, and the last yeah, eruption, yeah, before 2010, yeah, in the eruption of November 22 in uh, 1994, the risk of pyroclastic and a uh, kill around uh, 64 people. And also the last uh, accident, uh, a series of eruption of the volcano in late uh, 2010, which included plastic close, killed around 275 people, uh, injured a dozen more, and forced tens of thousands to evacuate the area. Uh, based on the history of eruption, Merapi has two pattern yeah, uh, eruption process. Firstly, uh, we categorize as uh, effusive, yeah, followed by lava dome growth, which repeat every six, uh, four until six years, and produce pyroclastic flow, known as uh, Merapi uh, type uh, news ardente. Uh, news ardente is uh, French, yeah, French word. In English, uh, we call as hot cloth, or in Java language, we call as Wedus Gembel. Yeah. This is very, very hot because the temperature until uh, 600 degrees Celsius. And the second one yeah, is explosive eruption with ruins and bureaucratic flows reaching around 10 until uh, 15 kilometers from the creatures. So the uh, speed is very fast. Yeah. Uh, there is a Spanish proverb yeah, which says that blessing in disguise or in java proper uh, disaster brings a blessing uh, based on uh, this case yeah Merapi erosion may cause damage to human animal animal and plant life but in the long term this is a uh, natural processes for the improvement of the agri ecosystem around Merapi. Uh, fresh bioclastic material as a result of eruption not only provide a new substrate for enslaving soil processes and conserving productivity, but also 
contract eroded or degraded soil. Also from soil fertility aspect, that pyroclastic deposit is a suitable medium for plant growth, providing physical support, essential plant nutrients, and plant available water. So this is a uh, uh, we categorize as a uh, blessing yeah, <laughs> in the uh, Merapi eruption. So this is the uh, uh, land use map from uh, Sleman district uh, because um, Mount of Merapi is located in the Sleman district. Yeah. This is the blue area uh, is predominated by the secondary forest and this is used as a protected forest, also for forest uh, tourism. The green one, uh, areas, this is the plantation, forest bed and village, and the yellow and bronze is uh, used as a rural or urban uh, areas. So if uh, we make a slice, uh, crosswise of the Merapi landslide, uh, it can be made into several landscape units, yeah. Namely, uh, if you make a slice, yeah, like this. So you can see uh, we can divide it into uh, four landscape unit. And, it, and this creature one, yeah, creature. But uh, we never touch this area because this is very very uh, dangerous. This area we just uh, do, yeah, research just around in upper slope area. This is. And the second one is middle slope. Uh, the third one is uh, lower slope. And the fourth one is foot slope. Uh, so uh, we uh, call as the landscape unit. Uh, and also we can uh, apply the agro geology concept yeah, to overcome the problem of uh, Merapi eruption. Uh, Damage to agriculture land affected by volcanic material is actually temporary. Yeah. Pedologically, with the inclusion of fresh materials from the Merapi eruption, will occur a rejuvenation process. So, so this is a technical term in the soil science. Yeah, this is a rejuvenation process. So the soil become uh, younger than before. So that the soil will become more rich in macronutrient yeah such as calcium magnesium uh, potassium uh, sulfate and also macronutrients such as zinc iron copper manganese and also we have uh, benef beneficial or uh, useful nutrients such as silicon and uh, sodium agrogeology approach can be taken with how to manage and use natural resources in the geology yeah uh, so we have uh, so many stone, yeah. For example, like a volcanic scoria, um, uh, pumice, volcanic ash, and other anisty crop, yeah. And a uh, constituent mineral, yeah. Like this is the name of a uh, primary mineral, like uh, pyroxene, feldspar, hornblende, aukit, and so on. This is can you can use as a source of plant nutrients. And we go to the field, you can see uh, this is the soil morphogenesis of the soil. Yeah, This is someone to take the stone and they make a, a profile, uh, they slice uh, the soil. So you can uh, see there is a layering in this uh, soil body. This layering indicates the uh, Periodic, periodically uh, deposition process uh, when the eruption uh, of the Merapi uh, occur in this uh, area. So uh, this uh, photo is take around five years after eruption. Uh, this is uh, acacia, yeah, acacia uh, ducorin, also acacia mangium, and also grass uh, grow fastly. Yeah, in this uh, area. So this is uh, can accelerate the recovery process uh, in uh, this area after Merapi eruption. So this is just an, <coughs> an example if we make a profile 
uh, this is a profile at the upper sub area uh, if you go there maybe this is the position uh, above of a uh, bunker yeah uh, this bunker so you can see in that area is uh, just composed by the recent volcanic materials at the middle slope uh, you can see this is the profile of uh, andesol and the third one this is at the lower slope you can uh, find this is a uh, inceptisol yeah this is the the name of uh, soil according to soil taxonomy usda and the foot slope also you can see this is a uh, inceptisol uh, soil and uh, <clears throat> as i told you before that rock uh, you can use as the nutrient source for plants yeah. because uh, in uh, yeah rock uh, in uh, volcanic uh, areas is categorized as a uh, intermediate and stick yeah it is a very good uh, rock uh, used as the uh, nutrient resources so uh, inside of this rock, you can uh, find so many uh, primary minerals, like uh, microlite, bacchioclas, hornblende, pyroxene, and so on. And this prime mineral is categorized as weather mineral. It means minerals easily to weather, to dissolve. So uh, if you crush uh, the soil, uh, become the small size uh, like uh, a size as uh, dust yeah so you can use this uh, rock as a fertilizers so in the concept of agrogeology there is a slogan from rock to food it means you can use rock uh, to uh, fertilize the soil and plant with grow well So this is just uh, an example, uh, the dissolution mechanism of uh, primary mineral. Uh, so uh, you know in the air, uh, so many carbon dioxide, uh, if carbon dioxide react with the water, become a carbonic acid. Yeah. Carbonic acid is a weak acid. Even the this uh, weak acid, but uh, the amount is very huge, uh, very, very, very much. So uh, carbonic acid, can uh, dissolve the prime mineral yeah so the uh, proton from carbonic acid will dissolve cations from the prime mineral and uh, cation will be uh, released to the solution yeah such as like calcium magnesium yeah potassium yeah, sodium zinc iron uh, copper and so on yeah this is uh, uh, one of the data we obtained, yeah, this is the composition of a uh, nutrient uh, in its uh, landscape unit. Uh, so this data already published in the uh, Bulgarian Journal of Soil Science. This is uh, written by Dr. Lisnor Aini. Yeah, in the uh, maybe you can uh, find in the journal in the website. Yeah. So you can see that at the upper slope areas, yeah, so many uh, nutrient, yeah, because this is uh, near the eruption center. Yeah. So at uh, the upper slope, yeah, uh, contain so many uh, nutrient. Yeah, this is phosphate, post iron, calcium, magnesium, uh, and uh, this is uh, <coughs> for potassium, sodium, and zinc. So this is indicated that uh, volcanic material uh, is rich in the nut uh, nutrient for plant growth. Yeah. So this is one of a strategy for cropping system at uh, the hilly areas, because we know that uh, surrounding the Merapi mountain is uh, hilly areas. So, uh, in uh, the slope uh, position, you can use the perennial plants, yeah, where uh, because the perennial plants have uh, strong roots, 
and they can keep the soil so to uh, embedded the soil erosion processes. And also if the litter yeah, uh, goes down to the soil surface, so if this uh, organic material will be decomposed, also some nutrient will be released also the soil. Yeah. I think this is uh, one of a uh, strategy to uh, plant uh, crop uh, in uh, the at the hilly areas. So this is a uh, agro ecosystem uh, at its uh, landscape uh, unit uh, according to the observation at the uh, yeah around five uh, years ago that uh, at the upper slope area with slope uh, more than uh, forty percent. The vegetation is dominated by acacia ducurrent, albacea, uh, Congo grass, paragrass. So this is categorized as a, a secondary forest ecosystem. At the middle slope, uh, with slope around uh, 15 and 25 percent, the composition of vegetation uh, is uh, albacea, paragrass, and this is uh, categorized as uh, agro forestry ecosystem. And at the lower slope, we we uh, slope around eight until uh, fifteen percent. Uh, the composition of vegetation is albacea, mahogany, kinetum lemon, paragrass, bamboo. This is uh, categorized as multiple cropping. And at the foot slope area, yeah, almost uh, flat. So that's why the uh, composition of vegetation is uh, so very. This uh, you can find uh, mahogany, coffee, coconut. Rambutan, bamboo, banana, mangosteen, uh, and this is uh, categorized as a uh, uh, multiple cropping yeah, system. This is just an example the uh, picture of agro system at the middle and <coughs> upper slope area. Yeah, this is middle and lower area, and this is at the foot slope area, and just uh, an example. And also one important uh, thing to recognize the uh, condition after eruption. Uh, also, we can use organic matter as uh, amendment material. Yeah, the organic matter uh, can uh, you can use from the compost or manure. Uh, also, you can use uh, biological fertilizers. Yeah, uh, containing bacteria, fungi, and so on. So uh, the villagers uh, surrounding the Merapi, so many farmers, yeah, they uh, they have a cow, yeah, to produce uh, milk, and also they can uh, produce combor and menu to fertilize the uh, soil surrounding his house. This is a volcanic areas, yeah, at the upper. Slope upper area. Uh, also, if there is a flat area, the farmers can also plant with uh, many many vegetables, yeah, uh, like uh, cauliflower or the broccoli, and also uh, the other vegetables. And also, uh, you know, uh, after uh, Merapi eruption, so now the, there is uh, people. Uh, as uh, innovation to develop this area become a uh, lava tour. So they uh, use uh, the car. Uh, you can rent the car and go to the up. Yeah. Uh, uh, unfortunately, in the time you cannot go there because of the uh, uh, COVID pandemic. Yeah. So uh, the conclusion is, uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID pandemic, you cannot visit the Merapi, uh, which are very beautiful and counting and cold and I hope it's the future you will be able to go there. Yeah, this is the picture uh, in uh, several years ago. Thank you, gracias and arigato, uh, arigato gozaimasta. Maybe the last point, uh, yeah, the committee uh, give me asked to write some uh, question or problems in this case, yeah. Based on the bill, Biogeophysical condition of the Merapi areas. Uh, question arise one. 
What are the ideas or ways to manage the areas to increase the income of village community? Second one, in your opinion, is this area better used as conservation or production area? Uh, okay, please, you can uh, discuss with your friend uh, uh, to talk about uh, this problem. Okay, Ms. Sherman, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Eko, for uh, your interesting presentation. Yeah, it's so nice to see a uh, mountain, even though we are in the room. <laughs> okay, uh, we will open the Q and A session right now. Uh, we invite all the participants joining us, uh, both from uh, YouTube live streaming or Zoom meeting, to ask some question to uh, Dr. Eko regarding uh, the land use uh, for uh, tropical farming in the Mount Merapi. Is there uh, any question? Let me check. Okay, there is uh, Arif, Mr. Arif. Wow, there's a lot of uh, question comes, okay. Mr. Arif, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, is my voice uh, clear enough? Okay, you may you may ask your question, but please uh, speak a little bit louder because your volume is a bit low uh, in our system. Uh, okay, uh, is my voice clear enough? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, you can ask uh, your question. Okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, According to the statement that the fresh material from the eruption that caused rejuvenization process that make soil become more rich in macronutrients. So uh, my question is uh, that simple. Uh, is it possible for farmers to apply the uh, to apply less chemical fertilizer to the field uh, in the agricultural area near the Mount Merapi? Uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arif. Uh, you can answer uh, right now, Dr. Eko. Uh, you get you get the question from uh, Mr. Arif. Yeah, even uh, I didn't see completely. I <laughs> maybe I get okay. uh, some point about water uh, and chemical yeah. fertilizer. Is it right? Yes. Uh, is it possible to apply uh, chemical fertilizer for the cropping or for the farming in? in uh, mountain Merapi, in uh, mountain area. It just was one question about fertilizer or just also about water supply? Uh, Only one question. One. Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, the farmer also, also uh, in Yogyakarta, yeah, there is a department of uh, agriculture they uh, also support the farmers to uh, provide uh, some chemical uh, fertilizer, also some pesticide. But uh, uh, the government support uh, uh, farmer to apply organic farming. This is better than the uh, conventional farming because uh, however, uh, in uh, long term uh, condition, yeah, uh, apply chemical fertilizer, also uh, use pesticide, uh, herbicide is uh, not good, yeah, uh, for health, also for environmental uh, side. So, uh, especially uh, at the Changringan area, also the farmers they develop the uh salah organic yeah so salah organic and also some uh vegetable also they plant uh 100 percent organic farming yeah without pesticide without chemical so this is a uh, uh, government yeah government policy to support the farmer to plant uh vegetables or fruits uh, with uh, organic system yeah even they can buy yeah fertilizer but uh, not recommended. Yeah, I think this is the my answer. Okay, it... thank you, Dr. Eko. So uh, it? it is not uh, recommended by the government policy to use uh, chemical fertilizer. 
in the mountain area. Okay, uh, we go to the next question. There's a uh, Miss Mau Onodera. Miss Mau Onodera, can you hear my voice? Yes, from uh, yes, I can hear. Uh, Miss Mau Onodera. Yes. I have a question. Okay. Yes, but uh, can you speak a little bit louder? Okay, you may you may ask your question. Yes. Uh, I understand uh mud therapy eruption have a positive effect on agriculture in the long run. Uh, but what to do with agriculture activities immediately after eruption? Uh, can, can you please repeat your question, uh, Miss Mao Onodera? Yes. Can you please repeat your question once again? Ah, okay. Oh, what to do with agriculture activities immediately after after uh, eruption? Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I got the point. the point. Yeah. Yes. Okay. You may uh, give the answer. Yeah. Uh, after er uh, eruption. Uh, of course, we have to wait until the uh, pyroclastic material become cold. Yeah, because uh, the pyro uh, pyroclastic material is very hot. Yeah, after cold, so the farmer uh, firstly they have to uh, clean the leaf of plants uh, from the dust. Yeah, dust, uh, uh, merapi dust. Yeah, or because the uh, the size of uh, pyroclastic materials is the size from the dust size until the block size. The block size, it means uh, very big yeah, size. So for the smaller uh, smaller one, so the farmer normally they can uh, clean from the plant. And then after cold, uh, farmer can uh, do uh, uh, Activity uh, as uh, normal as uh, yeah usual yeah. I think uh, this is the problem is we just uh, to to wait until the uh, materials become cold. Yeah. Cold, for instance. Yeah, because uh, it, after cold, uh, actually you can use the uh, merapi dust as also as the fertilizers uh, to plants. According to the experience for the farmers, I, I have, have uh, asked her that after eruption and the uh, uh, volcanic materials become cold, they no need to apply fertilizer until one year. So this is uh, the, the advantage of the uh, volcanic material yeah, as the fertilizers. Okay. Uh, can you get the okay. point? Thank uh, you. Okay. Okay. So is uh, is it clear enough, uh, Miss Mo Onodera? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We will have one last question for uh, one uh, one participant. Neluni, Miss I don't know. It's a uh, Miss or Mister Neluni Senadira. Neluni Sinadera, can you hear my voice? No? Neluni, uh, Neluni Sinadera, can you hear my voice? Please activate your uh, mic, uh, microphone and you may ask your question uh, directly to Dr. Eko. Okay, we we have we got no response from Neluni. Okay, uh, we will give 
one last uh, one last change for Takuya Shirai, Mr. Takuya Shirai. Uh, yes, uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, can you yeah. hear my voice? Yes, uh, you you may ask your question. Ah, yes, thank you very much. Uh, yes, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to ask the uh, uh, what's kind of, after eruption. Uh, after eruption, yes, after eruption, maybe uh, so many times already eruption happened. So the environment around the Murapi mountain little bit changed. For example, yes, human activity increased and the some, yes, uh, yes, so changed. So uh, do you have any uh, research or do you have any idea uh, compared with, for example, 200 or 300 years ago, the uh environment uh the yes change of environment around the Murapi mountain yes that is my question compares so many years ago and now uh, uh, yes. dr eko can you get the point of uh takuya shirai's question yes. <laughs> i love <lost. laughs> i don't know or, or uh, Mr. Takuya Shirai, can yes. you please repeat once again? Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. So uh, many change happen, uh, maybe in Indonesia also. So mm -hmm. compare with so many, many years ago, time, for example, 100 years ago, also uh, become occurs uh, eruption. And uh, yes, uh, established establish was, yes, so uh, new environment, but, mm -hmm. So yes, compare with uh, 100 years ago and uh, now, do you have yeah. any, yes, do they have, do the area have some change? Yes. Okay, uh, so you, what, what, uh, what are you asking is the comparison between uh, the, yes. the comparison uh, between the condition before uh, uh, the eruption yes. and after the eruption, right? Uh, yes, and uh, and uh, yes, that is uh, yes. And compare with uh, uh, in the past and now, because uh, climate change also happens and uh, some oh, yeah 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 also, yes. Okay, I understand. Okay, yeah. Uh, you may give the next explanation, Doctor Eko, regarding the yeah. question. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, if we comparing the condition of Merapi around one hundred years ago, yeah, one hundred years ago until now. I think uh, not so much different, yeah, not so much different. Just uh, the change because the population surrounding the Chukcha is grow up, yeah. So uh, many people uh, move to the uh, upper area, yeah, because at the lower area already, uh, already full occupied by the people, yeah. So many houses are yeah, built, and also now the shift to the upper area. So at the upper area also so many building there. Even uh, there is uh, eruption. So I think uh, the people already has a strategy how to avoid, yeah, uh, how to run yeah, after the uh, Merapi eruption. So now there is a warning system at the Merapi area. Yeah, the government put the system. Uh, if uh, there is uh, indication that Merapi will be uh, erupted, so there is a sign, yeah, will on, yeah, and give a warning to people to move uh, to the other place, yeah. And then after eruption finish, they can go back to his home, yeah. I think uh, this is uh, the strategy uh, for the farmers yeah surrounding the Merapi areas so uh, they uh, uh, for the farmers yeah also the uh, uh, cultivate uh, plant like for the tables and uh, fruit and so on yeah, I think the the condition uh, the condition is uh, uh, not so much uh, different yeah, uh, because of the Merapi activity but uh, uh, Sociologically, yeah, more a uh, little bit different because of the the 
amount of population uh, grow up yeah uh, in Yogyakarta yeah I think this is uh, the condition in uh, Jogja areas okay ah uh, yes uh, thank you very much I'm sorry for taking the time <laughs> yes thank you very much Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Eko, uh, for the answer for all the question, and thank you for all participants who, who already uh, uh, discuss with Dr. Eko. Uh, before we end the session with Dr. Eko Hanudin, uh, let me share some summary for, uh, from his talk. Uh, Mount Merapi has a different uh, level of slopes and each slope has different type of soils. Uh, regarding this uh, condition, this difference of uh, soil type is also affect uh, how uh, the recommended uh, land use for each slope and also it will vary ba based on the level of the slope. Uh, as mentioned by Dr. Eko, there are three types of land use uh, recommended for uh, each slope in Mount Merapi from secondary forest, agroforestry, and also multiple cropping. Well, uh, we are now in the end of a second talk, and we will now move to the third session. Uh, we already discussed a lot about uh, the land use uh, because this summer school is about tropical farming. Now we will get some insight regarding how the cropping system in the tropical area from uh, Dr. Makruf Nuruddin from Gajah Mada University. We are delighted to invite uh, Dr. Makruf Nuruddin here. Dr. Makruf, can you hear my voice? Okay, yes, I'm already. Okay, uh, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Makruf. Uh, please share screen your uh, presentation slide. Okay. Yeah, you will have uh, 20 minutes for presentation and we will start the Q&A sessions once your presentation is finished. Thank you. Okay. It's just I share my, my file. You can see my file. Uh, not yet. Uh, we still, not yet. Okay. Uh, yeah. We okay, still maybe we're waiting. Just moment. a moment. Okay. Okay. Before we start, uh, I'm still invited all the participants to uh, ask some question for this session, for this Q and A session by uh, writing the question in a chat. Uh, column in Zoom meeting, or you may click a uh, raise hand button in uh, Zoom meeting application uh, for uh, ask some question. Thank you. Dr. Makruf, uh, you may start your presentation. My, my, <clears throat> okay, my friends already, everybody can see my uh, slide. Not yet. Yes, we we okay. have seen. Yeah, we have seen your slide. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much for everybody here, especially for my colleagues from uh, uh, Mount Jakarta, to give me <coughs> chance to give a lecture uh, uh, connecting to a topic uh, tropical cropping system, especially surgeon farming systems. <coughs> okay, uh, this one is outlines of my uh, uh, my talks. Uh, first one, I want to talk about uh, tropical cropping system in Indonesia. And then second one, tropical cropping system in Yogyakarta. And then what is the surgeon farming systems? And then surgeon farming system in Kulon Progo. And also surgeon farming system in Indonesia. Why I <coughs> give uh, out a lot like this, like this one? Because actually, surgeon system is uh, come from Yogyakarta. And uh, uh, expansion of this system now uh, distributed in uh, many area in, Indone in Indonesia. So I want to show you just briefly, not so much. Okay, uh, this one is uh, 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 connected to cropping system. You know, uh, actually, uh, we have uh, five factors uh, to uh, manage our, uh, our land. Okay. Uh, 
uh, this first one is soils, very important, and then climate, and then land use, and also landform, yeah? interaction and uh, interrelation of uh, all of factors uh, uh, connected to uh, soil properties. And soil properties uh, have uh, different soil fertility. So uh, because uh, soil fertility is different, how to manage is different. Uh, I want to show you this one in Indonesia. We have uh, 17,000 uh, islands. So why uh, this one is very important? Because actually, uh, as I uh, mentioned, Sorjan system comes from Yogyakarta. And now we can uh, 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 find uh, Sorjan system in Kalimantan, for example, in Central Kalimantan here. And then in uh, South uh, Kali Sumatera, Palembang, Jambi, and many areas in Indonesia. Ah, we know uh, Indonesia uh, in tropical regions, uh, and we have uh, many kind, a lot of kind of soils uh, in Indonesia. Yeah, uh, maybe it's a little bit difficult. Aridi soil, aridi soil is a little bit difficult because uh, we, we don't have uh, dry area. If you do in Nusa Tenggara, uh, East Nusa Tenggara, for example, yeah, but uh, uh, rainfall is uh, more than one thousand. Actually, if you, we want to find any area like in uh, maybe in uh, Middle East, in uh, Australia, for example, because uh, rainfall is less than uh, 500 millimeters. And this one is uh, all of kind of soil uh, we have in Indonesia, except uh, aridi soil. And this one is uh, Indonesia, uh, especially this one is Java, and this one is Jakarta. So in my presentation, I want to talk uh, about uh, solution system in Jakarta, but I want to show you also uh, solution system in many areas in Indonesia, yeah? for example, like in uh, Middle Java, <coughs> especially in uh, Kebumen, in Dema, and then in Sukoharjo, many, many uh, solution. And also in Kalimantan, there are some pictures I want to show you in Central Kalimantan, South Kalimantan, and also in South Sumatra. Uh, you know, maybe uh, this one is uh, volcanoes. Pak Eko uh, explained about this uh, Mount Merapi. And it is actually, you can see this one. Uh, we have uh, a lot of volcano, yeah? 132 active volcano. So this one is connected to a uh, kind of soils. Uh, you know, volcanic material is very fertile, yeah? to rejuvenation of soils, uh, as uh, I was uh, explained. And this one is uh, Volcano, yeah, 129.32, yeah, I think uh, around this one. Uh, this one also, we have uh, uh, tectonic of Indonesian region. Uh, we have Australian in Eurasian plates with Indonesia, the tectonic, tectonic site is favorable. So this one is... Uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, so we have uh, so many volcanoes. Okay, uh, I want to focus into Jakarta, as Paiko uh, explained also. Actually, we can uh, uh, explain like this one. In Jakarta, actually, this one is born Merapi. Uh, volcanic materials come from the top of Merapi and then going to the uh, lowland in Bantul. Yeah. This one is material of uh, Merapi. And then, uh, second one is sedimentary rock. Here, sediment rock in uh, west uh, part of Jakarta, uh, and also sediment rock in uh, southern part of Jakarta. Uh, in southern part, uh, we have special uh, cars and mar, yeah. and also uh, uh, cars also in uh, uh, west part of Jakarta. Why I want to show you this one? Because uh, surgeon system we can find not only in Pulau Progo but also uh, you can find also in Maro, in Gunung uh, uh, Wonosari Basin, yeah, you can find also. And then this one is uh, soil, uh, as uh, Pak Eko mentioned, in the soil in here, in uh, volcanic material, in the top is Andi soil, and then going to the uh, uh, food slot, yeah, change to be insect soil and anti soil. And also in the uh, west part is major soils, especially this one is uh, red soil, you can find red soil. And also some sandy soil, and then alfisol, insecticide, yeah, and also antisol. 
and then uh, southern part also we find uh, major soil this one is uh, red soils uh, artisan especially uh, and also special soil here this one is uh, fatty salt yeah in uh, onosari basin and also special soils here in uh, uh, waters, yeah, waters basin or in Kulon uh, I want to uh, explain more, uh, especially in this area. Yeah. Uh, climates, as uh, we know, we have dry and wet season, and rainfall actually high in Jakarta, uh, more than 1,500 uh, millimeters per year. And then humidity, uh, relative humidity, more than uh, 70%, and then temperature more than 25%. Celsius. Ah, and this one is uh, climate in Jakarta. It is very important this one because this because this, uh, of the climate uh, connected to uh, soil uh, development, for example. Uh, and this one is very deep, yeah, very high uh, rainfall, uh, soils and soil. And then this one's eutic, uh, most eutic, and we have a dry, yeah, eustic. Yeah, dry or dry area used it because uh, rainfall around 1,500. Yeah. And Judic area, we have uh, around 2,000 millimeters. Yeah. Ah, land use, uh, uh, basically, uh, city and village uh, 10%, and then natural forest and forest plantation uh, 30%, and then agricultural land 30%, and marginal and integrated land 30%. Nah. And this one is uh, land use in Jakarta uh, in the Marapi Mountain. Actually, it's forest conservation, yeah, basically. But now uh, some areas change to be agroforestry and also uh, farmland. Yeah, and then uh, here uh, rice farm. Yeah, in uh, Jakarta, Bantul. Yeah, and then uh, west side is agroforestry. And then in southern parts, uh, especially in uh, Gunung Kidul, yeah, this is agroforestry, and also rice and cassava, yeah, especially in uh, Wonosari Basin, yeah, yeah, and also special in uh, water basin or in Kulon Progo, this one is rice farm. Yeah, I want to explain some sense system in this area. Uh, and this one is land farm. We have uh, all of kind of land farm we have because uh, why this one is very important because. Uh, Surjan, uh, surjan connected to uh, at least alluvial, fluvial marine, and marine, and also uh, surrounding surjan area. Uh, we have uh, update and also cars. So this one is very important connected to uh, soil fertility in the surjan uh, uh, farming system. Uh, this one's elevation uh, in the top of uh, Merapi, uh, more than thousand. Uh, metals and then uh, <coughs> surrounding uh, water basin, we get the mountain around 300 to 700 meters. And then southern part, yeah, southern part is uh, cars area, yeah, and also uh, sediment part here. Ah, okay, I want to go to Sorjan, yeah, uh, focus to talking about the Sorjan funding system, yeah. Uh, before uh, talking of uh, surjan fund system, I want to say about this surjan. What is the meaning of surjan? Actually, surjan come from Java language. Yeah? Uh, Sarojo or sarojan means rangkap in Java or double yeah, in English. Double. Yeah? So in Jakarta especially, you can <coughs> see a surjan pattern of uh, traditional Java clothes. Uh, for example, like this one. So many kind uh, surjan, yeah, many kind surjan pattern, yeah, colors, and then uh, size and so on. Yeah, for example, like this one, yeah, different <coughs> kind of surjan. Okay, I want to go to the next guy. You can see this one. Uh, you can see strips like surjan in the cloth, similar, yeah, similar uh, kind and also size is uh, different. And I got picture this one from uh, water basin yeah, from here. And uh, you can uh, see step like this one. Yeah. So uh, this one is similar with surjan. Yeah. And this one, why uh, this uh, farming system, <coughs> uh, people mentioned is surjan farming system. Yeah. Okay, I, I, will, I would like to go to the 
uh, this area in uh, water basin. Uh, <coughs> uh, before that, okay, just I want to show you UV vision, but uh, after show you uh, this picture, okay, this one like this one. Ah, okay. Uh, from this picture, you can see uh, uh, this uh, area is A, and also this one is B. Yeah, this one is B. Uh, straight yeah like this one surjan and then we make a control section from x to y for example xy we can find uh, like this one yeah this one is a and then p a p a p and so on yeah like this one yeah we mention a a area is uh, ledoan or alur galian or furu yeah this one is furu yeah this one is furu this one is furu Furo and also P1, P1 is tabuan or guludan or, or ridge, yeah, or ridge. And this one is uh, why from uh, the top we can see uh, like uh, surjan, yeah, like many street, yeah, because uh, we got in this uh, farmland uh, furo and ridge, like this one. Yeah. Based on uh, the field experience, size of furo actually varies from two to uh, 15 meters, yeah. This A, uh, white, this one is uh, 2 meters to 15 meters, yeah. Different, uh, if, uh, different white of uh, farmland, yeah. And then reach B1, uh, high uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 uh, 1, 1 meters, and then white also uh, 2 meters to 2 to uh, 15 meters. And the field is different kind size, yeah. like this one. Yeah, okay. I think this one is uh, <coughs> uh, uh, sorjan cross section of sorjan. You can see this one. And then uh, I want to show you more detail uh, <coughs> connected to uh, uh, furo and uh, reach. Yeah, actually, and furo, for example, like this one in A. Yeah, uh, in A area, this one is wet area. And P is a dry area. And wet area, uh, uh, people, uh, farmers uh, cultivate uh, uh, mostly uh, rice yeah, or is a sativa. And some kind also uh, green peas, yeah, Paseolus raviolus. And some also kacang tungga, Paseolus vulgaris. And then terong, eggplant, yeah, Solanum melongena. And some kind also tomat, tomato, yeah, Solanum. Uh, Lycopexicum, and also walu, yeah, cucur bita moscata. This one is in A and furu, yeah, in a wet area. And we can find this uh, P in this one is dry area. And people here cultivate uh, uh, kacang tanah or arasis hipogaya, and then krisma uh, and kedele, krisma, uh, and then uh, bawang putih, bawang merah, yeah, alium uh, aspolonicum. And then ciri, yeah, ciri capsicum anum or capsicum frustacen, and then green peas also, yeah, pignasinensis, and then uh, jagung, ziamais, ketela pohon, madat tulisima, and then papaya, karika papaya, and, on, and also many kind of fruits, for example, coconut, and then orange, and so on. Yeah, and this one is three area. So from this picture. Uh, I want to show you about this definition of uh, uh, sorjan. Yeah, actually, definition of sorjan farming system is uh, as an integrated system of dry land farming and wetland uh, farming, which are simultaneously carried out on the land divided into two parts. Yeah, which are known as uh, sorjan ridge and sorjan furu. The sorjan ridge is used to as dry land farming. And this part is uh, defined high and then wide and length. And Surgeon Furu, which just defined wide and length, is used for wetland farming. And this part is sandwich or and or surround surround its rich parts. And general the rich width and the, the, the rich width is a half of the furrow width. Yeah, and this one definition uh, according to Sutariano. Yeah. Uh, the point important is. Rich and furu. I think this one's uh, like in this picture. Yeah, this one is rich. This one is furu. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, ah, characteristic of rich and furu actually in rich uh, in three uh, uh, area actually well trained, more well trained, and then uh, more uh, effective soil depth, and then white resource fair, and also well aeration. Uh, and the uh, wet area, yeah, and the wet area is a lot of water. Yeah, so this one uh, people mention uh, 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 wet area, yeah, wet area because a lot of water. Yeah. Now, I want to show you sorgent system in plant profile like this one. Yeah, I want to uh, explain why people uh, in this area apply this system. Yeah. Uh, actually, as we the, see the picture uh, and the uh, south part of uh, <coughs> uh, area, this one is Saint June. Yeah, and this one is basin, and this one is mountain. Uh, we have uh, Menorah, yeah, and also Sentolo, uh, Kars uh, mountain. Uh, you know basin, but, but why this one is basin? Because uh, actually uh, river uh, from in this basin just only one, yeah, Serang River. But uh, when uh, water comes from the mountain uh, to the basin, the water is difficult to go to the sea. This one is sea, yeah, because this one is barrier. Saint June is barrier. Uh, so in this area, uh, in uh, rainy season especially, this one is flooding, yeah, flooding in this area. Yeah, so I want to show you uh, this one. Uh, Physical of water basin. You can see this one is uh, mountain in Menorah and Sentolo, and this one is basin, and this one is uh, Saint June. Yeah, Saint June. This one is uh, yeah a high. Uh, I think around uh, twenty. Yeah, twenty meters, twenty five meters. So uh, water come from mountain and then go to the basin, and difficult to go to the sea because they have this period. So and this area is flooding. Nah, because flooding, people farmers here try to uh, uh, make effort how uh, even do flooding, but uh, people can uh, cultivate uh, rice or uh, vegetables. So people here uh, reconstruct yeah, uh, this land to be surgeon system, like uh, I mentioned. <coughs> nah, I want to show, show you characteristics of uh, water basin. Uh, what is basin? Uh, the mountain, you uh, as I mentioned, this one is sedimentary, this rock. Uh, we found many kind of stone here, uh, and this seed, dust seed, marls, cars, brexy, and so on. Yeah, and soil here also uh, many kind: andesol, molisol, alkisol, insertisol, and antisol. And this area because the uh, slopey and hilly, this one is eroded. Yeah, previously this area is forest, yeah, but now change to be agroforestry. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, because eroded, uh, <coughs> water uh, come from this mountain going to the basin. Yeah, and the basins uh, uh, characteristic this one's alluvial and fluvial marine. Why? Why this one fluvial marine? Because there is uh, effect of uh, marine here. Uh, because actually, Saint Jude is not uh, a dynamic. Yeah, that is Saint Jude is dynamic change every time. Yeah. So effect of uh, sand dune, effect of uh, salinity come to uh, uh, to the basins area, in, especially in this in the part of basin. Yeah? And then this soil here, especially in fatty soil, yeah, some uh, also uh, in fatty soils, and very bad drainage. Yeah, and then flooded in rainy season, and dry in dry season. Yeah, yeah. so people here uh, cultivate uh, rice and also vegetables. Yeah, this area now because in this area is flooding yeah uh, people try to motivate land to be surgeon system here okay this one is point very important point uh, surgeon in this area ah in the same june uh, now this one is made in uh, eolin because uh, wine uh, uh, thick wine and so is anti soil especially phosphor and iron sand in very fast rate coconut vegetables and fish pond in this area Okay, I want to focus this one, yeah, and Surjan uh, here as I explain. Now, why is Surjan uh, system choose uh, at least because uh, rain farming area and food and, and flooding, yeah, food prone areas, for example, in Pulau Provo, as I mentioned, flooding and rainy season, and also in Sukaharjo, especially in Pengawan Solo, yeah, Road Pengawan Solo uh, rivers, this area is also flooding. And then submerged and salinity uh, affected area, especially in Demak and Kalimantan. Yeah, as I mentioned, in Demak, 
because the uh, uh, ground water is saline yeah so people try to make the sorjan to modify it yeah and to cultivate uh, rice and also green peas especially in the uh, center of green peas yeah and also in kalimantan yeah in kalimantan uh, especially in uh, ini in tidal area and pit yeah pit soil tidal area in kalimantan also Uh, and also acid sulfate soil in Kalimantan and Sumatra. Yeah. Now uh, come from Yogyakarta, uh, surgeon system applied in many area in Kalimantan and Sumatra. Yeah. Ah, this one is benefit to surgeon system. Yeah. First to practice crop diversification because in surgeon system we can cultivate many kind of uh, crops. And the second one to practice agricultural intensification according to time and space. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Not stop. Every time people have uh, activities in the field, yeah, uh, cultivate rice, vegetables, yeah, and so on. Yeah. To use solar energy in uh, agriculture more efficiently because uh, people make uh, more, yeah, more space, yeah, uh, to uh, uh, use solar energy and to reduce the risk of total crop failure. Yeah, for example, because season pest, pest disease. Uh, market and so on. Yeah, sometimes uh, if uh, one only one, for example, rice, if royal, uh, rice is fail, uh, people didn't don't have uh, anything. Yeah, so uh, if uh, we have problem about rice, uh, farmers can uh, get uh, from the purpose for some other. Now, just this one is uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, your yeah. time is uh, is up. Maybe you you can a little bit faster. In, okay, uh, just or... one minute. Okay, yeah, one minute. <laughs> okay, yeah, as actually, surgeon system start from uh, more uh, before 1920, and then 1940, uh, first in Kebumen, and then 1950 in Suparjo, and then uh, 50 to 60 in Demak, yeah, and then uh, 1970 in uh, Kalimantan and Sumatra. This one is classification uh, program. Okay, just I want to show you uh, actually many research uh, connected to surgeon system, uh, connected to water management, soil fertility and management, pest and disease, farmer income, social economic, uh, eco biophysics and so on. Many many research. Yeah, uh, mostly most research is uh, uh, surgeon system is benefit more benefit for farmers. Okay, ah this one is uh, I want to show you uh, like this one. This one in Pulau Progo. You can see this one is rich uh, with corn. This one is uh, furo uh, rice. Yeah. Uh, this one is uh, uh, alium. Yeah. You can see this one. This one is chili. Yeah. Uh, this one in Dema, yeah, as I mentioned, yeah, in Dema, uh, corn and rice, especially green peas. Yeah. Green peas in Dema is a lot of. Yeah. Ah, this one is Kalimantan. Yeah. In uh, acid sulfate soils, uh, actually we have problem connected to. Uh, pyrite, yeah, this one is pyrite, uh, the uh, uh, red, uh, the yellow one. This one pyrite. Pyrite is big problem because this one is uh, very low pH. Okay. okay, I think I think this one. But just uh, before finish, I want to show uh, problem. Yeah, problem in ah this one. I because uh, uh, community uh, give uh, uh, as a uh, give a problem. Uh, so First, is the surgeon farming system accommodate the modern farming system? Yeah, please, uh, you can discuss because this one is traditional farming system, and this area in uh, rich and poor maybe to apply it. For example, mechanization, yeah, for example, using uh, combined aspester, for example, and so on. It's a little bit difficult. How about this problem? Yeah. Second one, how to improve the surgeon farming system in order to increase farms income? Yeah. Even though, yeah, uh, surgeon is uh, benefit to uh, farmers, but uh, actually uh, 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 not enough, yeah, not enough. Yeah. Okay, I think this one. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Makro, for uh, such an interesting uh, talk. Uh, we now uh, invite. Uh, participants or participants to ask some question regarding the uh, presentation of uh, Dr. Ma'ruf. 
you may uh, click uh, your uh, raise hand button in Zoom meeting if you have some question for uh, Dr. Ma'ruf regarding the surgeon system. Okay, we have uh, three already. Uh, we will give the change for uh, Mr. Rifki Faisal. Mr. Rifki Faisal, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, I can hear your voice. Can you hear my voice? Uh, can you speak a little bit louder, uh, Mr. Okay. Uh, Rifki? No, how about the voice? Yes, yes, we, we uh, can clearly hear you. Okay, you may ask okay. your question to Dr. Maruf. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, from the presentation, we know that the system, the surgeon system choose uh, by uh, the rain area, float area, submerged and salinity area, tidal area, and acid support soil. So uh, from this, my question is, uh, how can the surgeon system solve the salinity, the salinity problem and the acid sulfate soil affected area? Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rifki. Uh, Dr. Ma'ruf, you may uh, answer the okay. question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, as I explained, for example, in the mark, yeah, uh, you know, the mark is uh, we have problem uh, connected to salinity. If we modified land to be rich uh, every time uh, during rainy season, uh, rain, yeah, rain can uh, clean or leach uh, salt from this uh, land. So uh, by uh, the time, yeah, uh, after five years, ten years, or so like this one, this land is uh, uh, don't have, yeah, it doesn't have a problem connected to salinity. This one, and also in uh, tidal and also acid soil, yeah, acid surface soil, si similar actually. Uh, if we make uh, we construct land to be rich yeah, every time, every rainy season, this one is good chance to leach. Pyrites to lead uh, salinity also because it tackled also uh, 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 salinity and also uh, pyrite big problem. Yeah, actually like this one. Yeah, and we don't have any other uh, <coughs> source of water just only from rain. Yeah, because you know, uh, especially in Kalimantan, yeah, in Kalimantan Sumatra, because quality of uh, soil is not so good. Yeah. Uh, in uh, pH, yeah, uh, water uh, pH uh, less than uh, three, less than five, uh, less than four, uh, not good to leach, yeah, to clean uh, soils. But in the map possible, yeah, in the map possible because from the map, uh, <coughs> what from, for example, from irrigation, irrigation uh, uh, channel, this one is possible to uh, uh, leach uh, salinity, yeah, okay. Enough. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ma'ruf. Uh, how about the answer, Mr. Rifki? Is it clear enough? Yes, it's clear enough. Thank you. Okay, now we go to the second question from Miss Ayumi Osaka. Miss Ayumi, you may activate your microphone and you can yes. ask your question. Yeah, you can ask your question directly. Thank okay. you. Yeah. I sympathy with the so content of the thread and because so the climate is a little like uh, similar in Japan. So it may be a little old topic, but so please forgive me. Uh, so I have a question and about the current uh, situation that uh, there are more um, permanent the, um, area. So occupied by the town. I thought it was wonderful to make um, effective use of land. And so in that context, context how do you do think land so antiosation will run, will lead to higher production efficiency? Uh, Ms. Ayumi, can you can you repeat once again your okay. question? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Okay. Maru, can I, you I, get I the point? Yeah. Yes, okay. I, yeah, I get, you get point. the point. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank Dr. you. Um, sure. Ms. Ayumi, thank you very yeah. much. Uh, thank yeah. You. 
you know, uh, actually we have uh, uh, two systems, yeah. And so good system, and so please high, and so red area, and so farmer area for years and anymore. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, as I explained, it's only in this area. We have uh, two seasons, dry and uh, rainy season. During rainy season, we have problem connected to flooded. If flooded, we, we don't have anything to cultivate because flooded. Yeah. So people make rich. Yeah. And the rich, even the flooding, yeah, actually at a uh, high high of rich uh, depend on depend on flooding. Uh, sometimes it's one meters and then uh, one uh, 0 0.5 meters and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Even the flooding, uh, people can cultivate. Yeah. This one is in the rainy season. In dry season, in dry season, actually uh, water is very limited and not enough. Because water is not enough, if we want to cultivate of all of land, this one is a big problem because water is not enough. So uh, people just cultivate in their furrow, in the furrow, just on the furrow. Yeah? On the furrow, uh, farmers cultivate rice, sometimes also uh, vegetables, as I mentioned. Yeah? Just people only use furrow because uh, water is not enough. Yeah? Jadi, uh, uh, during one year, people actually farmers not stop to defeat this uh, land because uh, uh, farmers have many uh, uh, options, yeah? uh, rice, for example, and then if rice is finished, uh, and then our problem, and then uh, vegetables, like this one. So this one, I mentioned this one is uh, uh, good, yeah? good effort how to uh, make more efficiently, yeah? more effectively yeah, of the land uh, to produce uh, vegetables or Price. Okay. Enough. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Answer that. My English is so poor. I'm sorry. No, okay. No uh, thank you, Dr. Ma'ruf, for the answer. Uh, Ayumi, uh, is the answer clear enough? Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, uh, it's fine. Okay, thank you, Miss Ayumi. And we are now in the last uh, question. Uh, we will ask uh, Chaya Di Sanayake. Chaya Di Sanayake, can you hear my voice? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Uh, Chaya, can you yeah, please yeah, okay. uh, turn up yeah, I can, the volume? I can hear you. Is it clear now? Yes, yes. Yeah, you may okay. ask yes, your yes. question. Yeah. Yes. So in my country with the urbanization, there is a problem of agricultural land area getting fragmented. So do you also have this problem? And if it is so, is this uh, surgeon system um, practiced in consolidated agricultural land or is it just farmer fields? Yeah. Okay, Dr. Ma'ruf, you, you, okay. you may answer. Okay, I, I got uh, this point, yes, yes, okay. A very nice question and exactly similar in <coughs> in in this area also. It's very fragmented lands, big problem, yeah, uh, in this area. So now, uh, because the family have, uh, for example, three or four uh, child, for example, yeah, and then this area is fragmented. So now our farmers have uh, maybe around uh, two thousand meters, yeah, two thousand meters, and then more tends to be smaller, smaller, and smaller. Yeah, so in, in the second problem, as I write in my presentation, how to improve, how to improve, uh, to increase uh, income of farmers, how to modify this uh, system uh, to get more uh, income, more uh, product from uh, uh, their crops or something. Yeah, 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 I think this is a big problem in my country. So. Yeah, actually not enough. In my opinion, actually to uh, life, yeah, life enough. Uh, at least we have uh, one hectare, <laughs> one hectare. But big problem. So we have transmigration program to move uh, people from Java, for example, to Kalimantan and to Sumatra. And this one is solution actually. But it's not easy now. Not easy. Yeah. Uh, Forty years ago, this one is very easy. But now it's very difficult because we have land uh, 
uh, very difficult to open new land. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, I got this land is uh, marginal land, yeah, big problem land. For example, connected to uh, pirate, yeah, uh, to flooded and so on. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ma'ruf, and thank you, Chaya, for the question. Uh, we apologize that we have to close the Q&A session for uh, Dr. Ma'ruf talk. Uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Ma'ruf, for joining us today. And uh, before we end the session or end the talk with Dr. Ma'ruf, let me uh, share some summary. So the surgeon system uh, is a more optimal uh, strategy to manage the area, especially the ones that flood prawns or uh, typically basin type. So uh, this uh, system allow uh, us to integrate uh, wetland and also dryland crops at the same time. And okay, uh, that's all for uh, the third session uh, with Dr. Ma'ruf. And last but not least, we will now uh, go to the last session. And I hope everyone is still stay tuned with us here and still excited because uh, for this uh, talk, we will welcome uh, the prettiest speakers uh, of all speakers uh, joining us today uh, in this session. Uh, please welcome Dean of Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, uh, Dr. Indira Prabasari. And in this session, Dr. Indira will talk about bioenergy and sustainable environment. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, everyone. My dear uh, dear participants, I hope you're still awake, just like the uh, Dr. Siti said, uh, because this is the last uh, uh, last uh, lecture of uh, today. So uh, in this time, I would like to talk about the bioenergy and um, bioenergy and sustainable environment. So I will, I would uh, capture some of the, uh, the projection of uh, bioenergy in Indonesia and how it uh, uh, de develop and the project and uh, why it's failed and so on. So I think start next. Next. Now, this is the overview of presentation. So um, we would like to discuss about the, what is bioenergy and uh, biomass and also the link with the environment. And then we will see Indonesia from the energy perspective. The, as we know that Indonesia is the, uh, having huge population. Uh, it's about 250 million at the moment. And then we will, we will talk about the bioethanol uh, production and then the Yatrofa project in Indonesia and some uh, challenges. Next, please. Now, this is the, the word en uh, energy uh, prospect. We can, we can see there in the slide that the, uh, in 2008, the population is around um, 6.7 billion but it increased a lot um, uh, predicted in 2000 and uh, 2050 that the population will be 10 billion. So it's a huge uh, increase. And of course, with, uh, when population increase, the energy uh, demand increase because uh, people cannot live without uh, energy. You know, we need, to, uh, we need to do activities and all activities, especially at the moment need energy. Next. And these are some other concerns why we need to look at the bioenergy, why we don't uh, keep on using foss uh, fossil fuel. Because uh, as we know that using fossil fuel is uh, quite easy. We just uh, take it from the earth and then uh, using for, uh, for our activities. So uh, other concern is about the pollution. 
and climate change and also uh, also uh, the resource uh, keep on deplet uh, depletion because we keep on using it using it without uh, able uh, with no ability to renew it that's why the bioenergy uh, plays important uh, role as a source of uh, energy in the future next and this is the projected world energy supplies. In this curve, we can see that uh, the, uh, the energy demand keep on increasing. As I mentioned, it's because of the population also uh, keep on uh, growing. And uh, most of the energy, if we look at, uh, at the curve, uh, still using uh, from uh, the coal and then the natural uh, gas. So it's uh, basically still from the fossil fuel, but that, that's not what we want for the future because uh, we want the future, uh, we want use uh, renewable energy more and more uh, in the future. Next. Now, uh, this is uh, biomass. So uh, people sometimes uh, said, what's the difference between biomass and bioenergy? So uh, biomass, I think, is one of the uh, or the source of uh, bioenergy. That's uh, renewable energy sources coming from uh, the biological materials such as uh, plants, animals, for example, cow dung, and then microorganisms and also the municipal waste. But um, in here, uh, I think we will uh, more uh, look at, at the few, uh, in the picture, we more look at uh, the uh, biomass uh, coming from the plants. So uh, as the biomass, sometimes it comes from the agricultural waste, which is, you know, uh, very ideal, because then we can do integrated farming system, you know, uh, more more uh, uh, applicable in the in the in the system in the ecosystem because then we can use uh, waste and then coming back to the ecosystem and so on. But sometimes it's not uh, ideal. So um, in in some of uh, uh, part we can you uh, like, like example in Brazil I think they use uh, uh, corn mostly uh, for the uh, bioenergy purposes in that in that case bioethanol. Uh, and here in Indonesia, uh, the source of bioethanol is uh, sometimes from agricultural waste. So uh, that's uh, three things we will look at briefly, the impact to the environment. We, uh, we will look at the land use, and then we will look at water, and then we will look at the biodiversity. Uh, uh, from the land use uh, projected, uh, uh, should be a picture in that? Can can you just uh, click it? Oh, there, there is no picture. Uh, just please go back to the previous slide. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the next slide. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. What uh, what happened? Because. Uh, in, in my slide, there is uh, some picture showing that uh, from all over the years, from decades, from uh, 1700 until 2050, uh, the, the land uh, keep on, you know, uh, keep on degrading because of uh, uh, human activities. Like uh, agriculture system, if we are not careful, can be concerned uh, harm the in environment as well because of its monoculture and etc. And that's why some of the system in agriculture then uh, more concerned at the moment at how to preserve the ecosystem. Next, please. Oh, I'm so sorry. There, there's also not a picture in it. Well, it should it should be um, a table mentioning that uh, for the biofuel uh, crop, for example, the sugar cane and then uh, the corn and then the oil palm as the source for uh, biofuel, uh, we need a lot of water to uh, to maintain uh, the plants and uh, and sometimes that's something that we have to consider if we want to use the biofuel crop because the the need of water is uh, it's used for some of the plant next please 
Oh, yeah, this is the biodiversity. So the loss of biodiversity uh, with continued agriculture expansion and then the pollution, climate change and infrastructure development. So uh, the loss is, uh, you know, getting, getting worse. Uh, like, for example, some of the uh, Indonesian typical animals at the moment extinct. Uh, for example, the Japanese tiger, uh, Harimau Jawa. Now, uh, we, we, can't, we can't find the Japanese tiger anymore, which is quite a shame because it's a very, uh, very specific uh, lived in the area of uh, Java, Java Island. But because of the human activities, now we don't have uh, the ecosystem so that biodiversity from uh, some of the specific uh, animals now uh, losing bit by bit. Okay, now uh, for the bioenergy types, uh, we already understand the biofuels that's uh, we can, uh, there is liquids, uh, for example, methanol, ethanol, or, and then biodiesel. And then also gases, gases like uh, for, for example, the methane, CH4, and then also the hydrogen. And then from the bio heat, uh, sometimes people using wood burning, so uh, they can get the energy as soon as, uh, uh, very quick, as soon as possible. And I think that's the bio heat or wood burning I actually already used uh, years ago uh, to, to keep on, uh, uh, to, to do cooking and then keep on, you know, uh, for the environment to, to get heat or warm uh, from the fire. And then the bioelectricity, it's the combustion and boiler to turbine and also microbial fuel cells or MVC. Now this is the conversion process. I don't want to talk more detail about this. It's more engineering, I guess. So the biological conversion, we can use fermentation uh, methanol, ethanol, or butanol, for example, here in this uh, Jakarta area, we have one uh, uh, sugarcane uh, plantation and uh, uh, the, the, the side uh, product of the sugar usually is uh, also ethanol, yes, uh, because uh, they use uh, uh, molasses as the source uh, for fermentation and then the product is uh, ethanol. And also anaerobic uh, digestion, and then anaerobic respiration, and then uh, also the conversion, including chemical conversion and also thermal uh, conversion, uh, such as the combustion, gasification, pyrolysis, and uh, etc. Next. Now, this is the path uh, of uh, biomass to bioenergy roots. We can see from the, uh, this is the, the photosynthesis. So uh, only the plant could, can do uh, photosynthesis because only plant have a uh, chlorophyll. And then from the photosynthesis, uh, photosynthesis uh, at uh, biomass is uh, provide uh, to, to provide uh, biomass. And then people use biomass to do conversion process uh, into biofuels, into bioenergy, and then uh, apply uh, for human activities. For example, we can use uh, bioethanol here to do cooking as well. And then uh, we can convert uh, into electricity and etc. Next. Now, this is some advantage uh, of uh, biomass, you know, so uh, as summary, I can, uh, I can say that the, the advantage of using biomass, it's because uh, we can, uh, uh, it's renewable. So it's not, uh, it's not something that can deplete, uh, we can always uh, produce the biomass. And then, uh, 
and some of the area, especially in the rural area, uh, it creates the stable jobs. And then developing technologies and knowledge space offers opportunities for uh, technology, uh, technology export uh, as well. And uh, carbon dioxide mitigation and other emission uh, reduction. So it's uh, more uh, environmentally friendly using uh, ethanol, for example, compared uh, to use coal. But there are, there are also some drawbacks of using biomass. The first is generally low energy content. And then uh, um, I, I can compare if all the land in this planet uh, planted uh, with a plant and then we use bio, uh, we use it as the source of biomass, it's not enough, you know, it's not enough to, to provide the uh, energy that all the population in the world need to do uh, activities so we have to uh, we have to add some uh, some source of energy uh, instead of using a biomass itself because it, it it's not enough so that's uh, one of the drawback next now, Indonesia, uh, what uh, Indonesia perspective in, uh, from, uh, from energy uh, perspective, how Indonesia, Indonesia look like? Well, as I mentioned early, uh, earlier, we have around 250 uh, million uh, population. So it's, uh, I think it's uh, number, uh, number fourth largest uh, population in the world. So it's, it's quite big. And then it's a rapidly growing economy and uh, growing energy demand, of course, uh, it's, it's not easy to provide energy for 250 million people. And then uh, the gas uh, will be important part of the energy mix. Indonesia used to be an uh, export, uh, exported country uh, for oil, but uh, it's not the case at the moment. So, and if the court, we can see that the energy demand uh, keep on growing. So uh, the government has to make a solution how to provide the energy for uh, all these people. So because the energy consumption will increase uh, approximately until 56% from 2010 until 2040. So uh, it's not uh, an easy job uh, to do. And then the fossil fuel in Indonesia. If we look at the map of uh, Indonesia and then the dot uh, the red dot is uh, mentioning the part uh, of Indonesia having for uh, having uh, oil inside, but as uh, as I uh, mentioned that the the consumption in the curve, then we can see that the consumption keep on growing, uh, meanwhile the production uh, of oil decreasing. Now Indonesia is not an exported uh, country of oil anymore, but uh, we get the oil from uh, other uh, country, which is not not good from a uh, financial perspective. Next. Uh, I think it's almost the same. Uh, next. Now, this is the projection of energy demand in Indonesia until 2050. So, um, and here we can see that uh, the need of energy uh, keep on growing and then uh, the government uh, try to be, uh, to provide more renewable energy instead of uh, using uh, fossil uh, fuel because uh, some of the uh, drawback uh, I mentioned uh, earlier. So uh, in that, uh, we can see that, uh, for example, in 2013, the, the consumption, uh, electricity ratio, uh, the, the ratio is, uh, hold on, it's difficult to, for me to see. Oh, I think in the next slide will be uh, more. Now, ah, this is the national energy policy. 
uh, how the Indonesian government want to uh, increase the uh, new and renewable energy, the NRA, NRE, in that uh, curve, in that pie chart, it's the, the, the green the green color. For example, in 2010, Indonesia still used a lot of fossil fuel. Yeah, the oil and then uh, the gas and then also the coal. Uh, meanwhile, the new and renewable energy is quite uh, uh, fa very, uh, very short. And then uh, in 2025, Hopefully, this is the policy from the government that the NRE it's uh, keep on increasing into 25.9%. And also in uh, 2030, and then keep on uh, going into 30.9% uh, 30 and in 2050, uh, hopefully the renewable energy new and renewable energy can be achieved by 39.5%. So the question, will that be possible? Well, uh, I don't know, because then we will talk about and discussion about uh, some of the uh, crisis uh, happened in Indonesia. For example, in 2008, you can see the very long queue, people queue to buy the gasoline. And then after that, the gasoline is finished. It's not uh, in, in the market anymore. So uh, Indonesia government doesn't want that to happen again, you know? So that's why now the research or the project uh, to provide renewable energy uh, is a speed up, but uh, we will see some of the uh, two example from the project, bioethanol project, and then Yatrofa project and why it's failed. Okay, next. Uh, maybe you can click it anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Th this is the natural gas. This is something that uh, we uh, can, you know, we still can use in the future because the pro uh, production is still uh, possible to provide the, the energy for uh, Indonesian people. Uh, next. And this is the carbon emission uh, remain low in Indonesia, but faces severe environmental challenges because of the increasing population, deforestation, and then pollution. The question is why the carbon emission remain low in Indonesia uh, instead of 250 million people? Because the uh, some of the reason, one of the reason, because the uh, activity of agriculture is uh, uh, still doing traditionally in most uh, part of the uh, farming system in Indonesia. And that's why the carbon emission uh, still low instead of the youth's population. Next. So this is the bioethanol production. Uh, Indonesia has a lot of sugarcane uh, factory because uh, during uh, the Dutch occupation, uh, the Dutch built so many sugarcane uh, uh, factories. And then, uh, uh, and that's why we have uh, many molasses as the site uh, or agricultural waste uh, from sugarcane. And then molasses uh, can be uh, fermented into bioethanol. But uh, some of the, the project then uh, fail because uh, the industry and sugarcane, uh, they prefer to sell molasses instead of uh, converting into uh, bioethanol because it's uh, more money and it's uh, easier, you know, uh, if they have to convert into uh, uh, bioethanol, they need to, you know, to give uh, more money. So it's, it's easier for them to sell it and then get the money. Now, uh, United States and Brazil are among the greatest producers of biofuels today. Uh, we can see that. Next. Now, this is the bioethanol uh, production. If the uh, raw material coming from a starchy uh, uh, type, for example, cassava, sorghum, and maize, 
So that should be um, some treatment before it can be uh, fermented, uh, especially the treatment to, um, to you know, uh, for example, and then cross and then do the hydrolysis process to cut uh, the starch, the amylum or um, amylopectin into the glucose. And after that, uh, we can do the step of fermentation process and then distillation to have uh, more pure of ethanol and then dehydration until finally we can get the bioethanol uh, 9.5%. 9, 9 uh, but my experience uh, doing fermentation from the waste of uh, cacao, the bioethanol is uh, only until 70%. And so far, it's, uh, it's a good result because uh, it, it's quite difficult to get uh, the uh, bioethanol with 99.5% nine, nine or even 90%. Um, it's, it's easier using the molasses or the agricultural waste from the sugarcane uh, plantation or uh, uh, from the sugar beet, it's uh, easier. But if we, we use the starchy type like cassava, sorghum, maize, and then in my case, using the agricultural waste from cacao, it's, uh, it's uh, hard to get the uh, high percentage uh, of alcohol uh, from bioethanol. Okay, next. Uh, I think it's almost the same. Next. Uh, why, why some of the picture is not there? Uh, yeah, no, no the, the previous one, please. The previous. Thank you. Uh, now, how is ethanol produced from corn? Uh, as, as we look at the in the previous slide, so uh, the ethanol are produced uh, from fermentation of glucose, but if we use, for example, corn, we have to hydrolyze uh, corn first uh, and then uh, uh, ferment it uh, into bioethanol. Next. Now, this is the source of bioethanol in Indonesia. This is cassava, uh, very big uh, cassava in uh, Indonesia and people can uh, use cassava for staple food, but uh, so that's why there is a, deep, uh, a debate food versus fuel because some people prefer cassava keep on uh, as a staple food in uh, instead of uh, converting into bioethanol. Next, I'm afraid the time is uh, up. Next. Now, Yatrofa project in Indonesia. Next. Now, in Indonesia, I think around 2003, uh, during the president of uh, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, there's a big project about Yatrofa. Next. Now, th this is uh, some of uh, the trial uh, in North Lombok in 2003. Uh, two years old Yatrofa from seed. Next, I will speed up. <laughs> Next. Now, this is seedling in uh, some of the area of Indonesia. So the project is quite big. So it's uh, not only in, in Java, but also in Kupang and then in uh, Lombok and then in some area in Indonesia. This is a youth project because Indonesia want to speed up the, uh, the bio uh, fuel. And it's also in uh, other island in Minahasa in Kalimantan. Uh, I think just skip all the pictures. Hope oh, stop there. And yeah, yeah. Now this is the the our previous uh, president Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono. But the problem with Yatrofa uh, project is uh, it's quite difficult to have or to get the good seed. That's the problem. So it's uh, it's many problems uh, happen, but. but Again, if we can't get the, the good seed of Yatrofa, it's uh, the production, uh, pro, production of uh, 
uh, biofuel, it's not uh, effective, it's not economically uh, good. So that's why people doesn't want to uh, to keep on uh, going. And then the project again is, uh, is failed. Next. Okay, I think I skip it up. Next. Next. Now, if uh, food versus fuel until now still, you know, still a hot potato in, in the discussion because some of the environmentalists uh, doesn't want, you know, like a big, uh, pr a big production of uh, plants to be converted into uh, biofuel. Uh, they prefer that uh, food using as food, as staple food. So this is, I think, uh, depend on the priority uh, in certain country, depend on the need of uh, the country, and then depend on uh, production pathway, and then the time frame, uh, how the government can provide the energy from the such a big population. So I think, again, the debate is still keep on doing and uh, keep on going at the moment and i think that's uh, some uh, one of the challenges some challenges in using renewable energy in indonesia and looking at the uh, the, the example of a failed project like yatrova project that's failed because of the uh, the seed production is not good enough or it's not enough to um, to provide uh, uh, to provide uh, with the uh, biofuel and then in case of uh, bioethanol uh, it's also failed because uh, many sugarcane plantation they prefer to just sell the molasses because it's uh, it's more profitable uh, in some cases for them so i think uh, this is it uh, from me uh, Thank you, uh, Dr. Siti, as moderator, and uh, time is yours now. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Indira, for uh, your presentation regarding the bioenergy and also uh, the sustainable uh, environment that can be created by utilizing the bioenergy. And now we will start the Q&A session and we invite all participants to uh, ask some questions for Dr. Indira. Yeah, we still have a lot of participants here and yeah, we still, okay. Okay, you may, you may uh, click uh, raise hand buttons uh, in Zoom meeting and we will let you to ask your question directly to Dr. Indira. Okay. Okay. Okay, we still uh, waiting. Okay, is there, uh, okay. Uh, we have one question uh, from uh, Ultra Rizky Restu Pamungkas. Ultra, uh, Mr. Ultra, can you hear my voice? Yes. You may. Uh, can you hear? Yeah. Okay, you may ask your question uh, to Dr. Indira Ultra. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the lecture. I'm very interested about climate change, especially climate change caused by trash or waste, like burning trash. And the question is, what is the biggest problem when utilizing organic waste into biomass? Because there is a lot of organic waste, especially in Indonesia, but it is not used optimally. That is my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ultra. Uh, we will give the change uh, to Dr. Indira to uh, answer the question from Ultra.
Okay, uh, thank you, Uthra. That's a very interesting question. Uh, why people not uh, using uh, bioenergy? Uh, I think that's uh, that's the question, Pusiti. Why 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 people in Indonesia not using more uh, uh, renewable energy? Okay, I think the answer is simple because it's not easy to use that. It's not easy. Um, I think uh, the policy uh, from uh, the government is not strong enough to push people uh, using uh, bioenergy. And when uh, there is still other option to get energy, which is easier and still affordable, people won't change, you know? It's, uh, we can use, uh, we, we can simply uh, buy the, uh, you know, like, uh, the LPG from you know from the market and still the price is still affordable because it's uh, subsidized and also we can still use the fossil fuel uh, fuel for our motorbike our, our uh, car because uh, uh, the price is still affordable because it's subsidized by the government now uh, as long as uh, we can uh, still uh, you know, still can get uh, the the source of energy, which is affordable, easier. People won't change. So I, I think that's the that's why the, uh, I, I'm glad to see the the policy uh, from the ministry that uh, they they will push the use of uh, renewable energy. I think that's it. I hope I can uh, answer your question, Ultra. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you for okay. your quick answer. Uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Indira, for the for the answer for the question from Ultra. Uh, okay, we still wait uh, for another question, but uh, while we are waiting, I have one question actually. <laughs> uh, is there any special characteristic of plants that are potential to be the source of uh, bioethanol or bioenergy because uh, as you mentioned before there are uh, uh, the report has been uh, studied with the food crops like uh, corn or cassava and also you also mentioned about the chatropa but is there any specific characteristic of plants that can be the source of uh, bioenergy or bioethanol. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Siti. So, um, yes, of course, there are some uh, specific, uh, well, the, the specific in, in plant is because the cell has the plant cell wall and plant cell wall is then used as, uh, plant cell wall is biomass actually. And uh, I think it's uh, in, a, in a country, I think I read of, uh, some of the journal mentioning that they play around with the DNA and then uh, produced uh, the plant with the thicker plant cell wall. So uh, when they use uh, plant as a source uh, for biomass, they can get more because the plant cell wall uh, is, is thicker. But again, uh, using uh, the, the plant cell wall as a source of biomass, it's not that uh, easy because we still have to cut uh, all, you know, all the complex polysaccharide and then we use uh, hydrolysis and etc. Then uh, produce uh, glucose and then we can easily convert it into bioethanol. It's uh, easier if we use, we use the uh, special uh, agricultural waste, especially from the uh, sugar cane uh, plantation, uh, like I mentioned, uh, molasses. Molasses is very, very good as a source uh, for uh, fermentation of bioethanol because it's easy. But again, people like molasses, and it's uh, a, a, the price is uh, is good enough. So some of the um, the sugar cane uh, uh, plant plantation then just sell it because it's easier and it's get uh, money but uh, and then again uh, according to your uh, question for yatrofa in yatrofa we will uh, get uh, the uh, oil 
the, the we, we call it biofuel. So uh, the uh, the the fruit of yatropha then collected and then press it and then we can use the, the oil. And uh, we need that the, uh, in order to get the, this is from economic calculation. So in order to get profit, we we should have uh, a plan with the special uh, number of the, the, the fruit of yatropha because if, if not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, productive, so it's not. People won't get uh, profit if they keep on doing in that business. And the problem is the the good seed is uh, expensive, although it's a project from the government. But I heard that some people sell it with uh, a high price, and then the farmers can't afford to buy it. So that's uh, one of the reasons. Uh, uh, why the project is failed to be implemented in Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Indira, for uh, your answer on my question. It's so complete. And I think uh, my question also trigger another participants to ask some question to Dr. Indira. We have Ajeng Putri Kusumadewi from uh, Pajajaran University. Ajeng, can you hear my voice? Ajeng Putri Kusumadewi, can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, I can hear your voice clearly. Okay, yeah, you may ask uh, your question. Okay, I want to ask uh, one, of the, one of the sources of your palm oil. In Indonesia itself, it's known as one of the major Ajeng, I'm so sorry. Uh, can you s turn up or uh, raise the volume of your uh, microphone or headphone? Okay, I'm sorry. Still cannot hear your voice. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my question is: one of the sources of, of fuel is palm oil. Uh, in Indonesia itself, is known as one of the major palm producing countries. Uh, what do you think? How the how the impact of using bioenergy comes from palm oil? That's my question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ajeng. Uh, okay, Dr. Indira, you may uh, answer the question from Ajeng. Okay, thank you. So the question is the possibility of using palm oil as the source of bioenergy. Yes, uh, yes, there is some uh, suggestion that uh, I remember that a few years ago, the price of uh, palm uh, oil as a uh, uh, as food is uh, de decrease, and then people suggest that uh, uh, it should be converted into uh, biofuel instead of uh, using as the uh, the food uh, to, to to fry some of uh, the food and etc. So uh, it is possible to use the palm uh, oil, but we have to use uh, some uh, treatment, some steps. For example, uh, esterification, the esterification, and then and then uh, purification, and uh, I think some some more steps. But uh, still possible. But uh, again, uh, I think uh, what ha what happened is. Uh, if uh, there is no real support from the government and then uh, also from the system, people still uh, not, people is not willing to do uh, the renewable energy because it's not, uh, it's not an easy job to do. It's, uh, it's a bit complicated. It's, uh, it needs uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of effort and Again, uh, w while we still can uh, get the uh, energy with the cheaper price and then easy, it's uh, it's not working. But if you're asking about the possibility, yes, there's possibility of using uh, cooking oil as a uh, as a 
as uh, one of uh, biofuels, but we have to do some, some treatment first. So we have to do esterification and then purification. And then, so it's not, it, it's impossible to use the as, 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 as it is, it's a, it's a, a palm oil. And I heard that University Universitas Pajajaran is very leading actually in the research of uh, bioenergy. Yeah, actually, I get some, you know, some information uh, from uh, UNPAD uh, regarding this renewable energy. That's congratulations. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your explanation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you Dr. Indira for the answer and thank you Ajeng for the question also. Uh, now we are uh, in the end of the sessions with Dr. Indira. Uh, and before we close the session, uh, I, I will share some summary uh, related to Dr. Indira uh, explanation. So uh, the bioenergy or bioethanol is a source of uh, renewable energy that can replace the functions of uh, fossil fuel or uh, non-renewable energy. As the fossil fuel is getting more scarce uh, and predicted to be uh, out of stocks uh, in a few years, uh, in the few years later. So uh, we need to prepare for the alternative uh, for the fossil fuel. However, uh, the utilizations of food crops such as uh, cassava or uh, corn, for example, uh, is uh, triggering new problems as uh, it can compete the, with the functions of the uh, crops as the food crops. So uh, there is a high demand uh, to high demand to develop or find out or explore a potential source uh, or potential plan that can be the source of uh, bioethanol. I think that's all for uh, the sessions with Dr. Indira. Once again, thank you, Dr. Indira, for having uh, for joining us in this session. Now uh, we are in the end of uh, the session uh, lecture with expert for uh, today uh, summer school. And before uh, I close uh, this session, uh, I will inform you that uh, for full course participants, uh, you have a homework yeah, to do with your group uh, in, the, in the WhatsApp group uh, by uh, solving and discussing regarding the study case that coming uh, from uh, all speakers uh, joining us today in, uh, in this session. Uh, your assigned LO will share uh, the topics of case study that each group uh, will have to solve and uh, you have to prepare a presentation uh, in any type or in any form that you want or you are comfortable with uh, to present uh, the result of uh, your group discussion. So you are, uh, you are allowed to use a presentation or just a simple illustration or sketch or even just a talk for tomorrow uh, students group discussion. Okay, uh, detailed information regarding uh, the case study for each group will be shared uh, after this session. And the material for uh, the material uh, from today's session and also from yesterday's session will be shared also uh, tomorrow. So after we collect all uh, the presentation material from the speakers. Uh, once again, Thank you very much for all uh, distinguished speakers for joining us uh, today in this session and also for the participants uh, from all uh, countries. Uh, we still have one more session tomorrow, so uh, make sure you still stay tuned with us tomorrow with the students group discussion and also the closing ceremony of uh, 5th ITFSS 2020. Uh, last but not least, uh, I wish you have a pleasant night today and you should have a 
uh, very good discussion with your group uh, for the full course uh, participants. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Indonesia is an agrarian country. The majority of its people depend on agriculture for their livelihoods. Its livelihoods, daily consumption, and policy regulators. The vast landscape makes Indonesia has complex problem in the agricultural sector. Weather changes, pest and disease attacks, land damage, low selling prices, lack of venture capital, land evictions, and so on. These problems can be solved through advanced technology in the agricultural sector, starting from the academic field. Department of Agri-Technology Faculty of Agriculture, Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta, Focus and Agricultural Cultivation Department of Agro-Technology of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta develop sustainable agriculture based on local wisdom so that it can produce graduates who can take part not only as agricultural business practitioners but also managers, agricultural entrepreneurs, educators, and researchers. The Vision Department of Agrotechnology of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta is to be a leading study program that has international insight and has advantage of sustainable agricultural science and technology based on local wisdom as an implementation of Islam and devotion. Agrotechnology of Universitas Muhammadiyah Yogyakarta was accredited A in 2014 and re-accredited in 2019. 